All right, today we're going to cover the three types of air caps that are available for spray guns. Most top-end spray guns, like those from Binks and DeVilbis, along with others, offer an LVMP, conventional, or HVLP cap. And that can be a very confusing thing for a lot of people. So we're going to show you each gun with two different materials. Uh, one's about the consistency of latex, and we'll kind of show you what the caps do well and struggle with when it comes to atomizing material. The latex will show you a medium to high viscosity material and so, some of the limitations of the air caps that you can uh, experience with the different kinds of caps and where a certain cap will be better suited. In this case, conventional is better suited for a medium to high viscosity coating. And then we'll show you some low, uh, lower to mid viscosity coating. In this case, it's a wood stain. So you can kind of see the difference between the three caps and how they perform. And that way, when you're making a gun selection at some point, you have a good understanding of which might be best for your particular application. So let's get going. Okay, so the first gun we're going to use is an HVLP gun. With HVLP, they have a rating on the air cap for how many pounds of pressure you're supposed to be able to maximally deliver to the gun uh, to remain compliant. HVLP guns are certified in their ability to effectively transfer material and so they can help you if you're under any regulation concern when it, in relation to VOCs or you're looking to reduce paint waste. That's one of their biggest benefits. They typically are about as, twice as efficient as a conventional gun at applying material to the surface. So you do waste less paint typically when you use an HVLP as shown uh, with the pressure, air pressure being less than suggested at the cap. The material here is about a latex consistency. I'm using a pressure pot, uh, but the overall performance of the gun would be pretty similar regardless of whether you're using a pressure pot or a gravity gun. The only difference is with a gravity gun, since you do have to thin material pretty significantly, uh, you would tend to be able to break it up a little better. But much, many materials that you'd spray uh, with HVLP will automatically be thin enough to spray to uh, use a gravity gun, but other materials that are thicker, latex being one, aren't going to really flow in a gravity feed situation. So we're using pressure to show you uh, kind of the, the limitations of HVLP with thick coatings and the performance benefits you do get. My pressure pot, I got set up, uh, fluid pressure is around 10, uh, six, seven pounds. And then my air pressure, I'm actually gonna maximize, which will be at about 22 pounds triggered. Uh, right now I'm at about 10, so I'll go ahead and increase that to 22, and we'll show you what it looks like uh, on our target here. So we're at about maximum uh, air pressure that you would be able to officially use HVLP at. Obviously you can always increase pressure beyond what's recommended, but then you lose the benefit of the gun. But I will show you what this looks like both at the recommended pressure and then even at an increased pressure, just so you can kind of see some of the, what HVLP delivers. So you can see with this material being a medium viscosity, it, HVLP is actually able to atomize it fairly well. You do see up here, you have a little bit of, a little bit of an orange peel to it at the very edges of the pattern, and that would lay consistent throughout. So if you weren't necessarily looking for an automotive finish with a mid viscosity coating like this, HVLP can work. Uh, but if you get into thicker materials, like an epoxy, uh, industrial epoxy that might be thick, you'd notice the orange peel would be significantly worse. So that's HVLP. We're going to go ahead and show you conventional with the same material. And we're also going to show LVMP. And uh, we'll also 
fine, do a thicker coating so you can see what that would look like as well. All right, so while the gun looks the same, we changed the cap, as you notice, it's brown. This is a conventional cap, so we're using pressure feed with a conventional cap and uh, material still medium viscosity. My air pressure is about 26 to 27, which is where the HVLP pressure was set. So you'll notice here that on the edges of my pattern, I'm getting a ever so slightly finer breakup. And that's because the, air, the conventional gun uses more air pressure, so it's less efficient. It can create a little more bounce back if, you're, if you crank your pressure too high. When used properly, it can be similar in performance to HVLP, but it isn't designated for compliance of reducing uh, uh, hazardous air pollutants. So if you're under regulation, you wouldn't be able to use it uh, for a lot of different applications. But it is an easier cap to learn. There isn't as much issues with atomizing about any material, whether it's a zinc or an epoxy or even just a thin material. It tends to atomize a lot easier. So it, it can be a very friendly cap for that aspect of the painting. And it it's, uh, it's, takes a lot less getting used to you don't need to worry as much about thinning material at times because it does tend to atomize a lot better. And we'll show you that with the thicker paint. We're also going to show you LVMP, uh, also known as a TransTech uh, cap, and show you what that looks like. All right, so third, we have an LVMP air cap. The pressure's a little lower, actually, uh, with the, compared to where we were shooting with the HVLP and conventional gun. LVMP uses medium pressure. So if you think HVLP, low pressure, less uh, overspray, medium pressure, similar amount of transfer efficiency that's about 65% efficient when used correctly. And then conventional is your most overspray uh, in a majority of cases and is typically a high pressure cap. So as we increase pressure, we increase overspray, but it makes it easier to break up material. So an LVMP cap, tries to balance uh, breakup with efficiency and does that very well. It's very good for medium to low viscosity coatings, very popular for wood finishing. Uh, this is similar to a latex, so we have said, and we're going to show you how, how it does here. So you can see it is getting almost the, sa the same atomization as conventional, but it is also very efficient, like HVLP. Uh, it isn't certified in most cases for a reduction of emissions, so if that's a concern, this gun wouldn't be compliant for that. Uh, but it is a very efficient way to spray and is easy to learn to use as well, similar to conventional. So we'll kind of show you all three patterns. You see that's the edge of my LVMP pattern, very fine breakup. Over here is the edge of my conventional pattern, again, fine breakup which gives you the best finish. And then we'll flip this over and show you HVLP. And that's the edge of HVLP. And with this medium viscosity material, we're actually doing pretty well with any of the caps. Uh, HVLP isn't quite as fine, but again, it, it did its job. And uh, for low to medium viscosity, it's a great cap. We'll show you a thicker material and then a thinner material as well. All right, so we're going to show you the conventional gun now again. This time we're using a Sherwin-Williams Industrial Epoxy. So this material is pretty thick. In general, if a material is much above 30 seconds in a Zon 2 cup, as far as the time it takes to run through the cup, it usually won't spray that well with HVLP. and It'll typically require a conventional style gun to spray well. You'll see my pot settings here. My air pressure triggered is at about 20 pounds, and my fluid pressure is at about 10. And what you're gonna see is, with this conventional cap, I still can break up this material pretty well. So as you can see, I'm still getting a very fine finish with conventional. Now watch as I switch to HVLP, what you'll see is the breakup will be very chunky and orange peel. 
and that's mainly because the HVLP has trouble with higher viscosity materials, much over 30 seconds and is on two. It does save on efficiency, but we'll show you the limitations here in just a moment. Okay, so this is HVLP. I've actually increased my air pressure. This is the macro epoxy, so a thick material. Triggered, we're at about 22 pounds, which is about as maximum air pressure that HVLP should be used with, with this particular gun. What you can see while I'm spraying is there's a lot more orange peel to the texture. And that ultimately results in a less fine finish. Now that, that's a little less than an industrial quality finish. If you weren't that concerned about appearance, you can still get away with HVLP with this material. But it gives you an idea of the limitation that HVLP has. So you can see here that that's uh, with HVLP. Then we come up here to conventional and how much smoother and, and flatter and finer breakup you get. And that's why there's the limitation with HVLP. We'll show you all VMP with this material now. Okay, so final gun is LVMP. Again, this is a thicker Mac, uh, epoxy industrial coating. So as you see here, we're actually getting a breakup similar to the conventional gun, but if you were to spray on certain surfaces that you had potential for a lot of overspray, uh, you'd actually get better transfer efficiency out of LVMP. And that's what the benefit to it is. It lets you spray a little bit better pattern compared to HVLP, but it still gives you efficiency, but it is not certified for reduction of emissions. So that's the downside. So that's a thicker material. We saw a low to medium viscosity material. And as you noticed, HVLP does well with those materials just as any of the other caps do. But as the material gets thick, HVLP is limited. All right, so finally, we have a very thin coating. This is a stain for wood. This would be very comparable to most automotive coatings and very similar low viscosity, very thin material. So first we'll start off with LVMP. LVMP is a very good cap for stains and woodworking. Compared to HLP, you get a little bit of a better breakup, which can often result in a little bit of, of a better appearing finish when you're doing woodwork. And it's also useful in general for the better breakup that you get. But we'll show you what it looks like here. So you can see I have no problem atomizing the material, but you'll see that that's sim similar whether it's HVLP or conventional as well, uh, and we'll show you that now. All right, so now we're going to show you HVLP uh, with the stain that's a very low, thin material. Uh, pressure on both the, all these sprays for the low viscosity material is around 12 pounds of air pressure. So here we go. You can see it has no problem atomizing, and you get a wide fan pattern. This is actually a very large pattern. Uh, but for low and thin material, HVLP is perfect. Now we're going to show you conventional. I want you to notice the bounce back that you see here, and then we'll show you uh, conventional so you can see that as well. All right, last we have conventional. As you'll notice, the, the breakup's all good across all these caps with thin material, but we want to watch the bounce back. So you can see it breaks up fine. You will get more overspray with conventional, especially with thin material, because the extra pressure isn't going to just serving to break up the paint, but it's actually hitting the surface and causing a lot of ricochet and overspray. So conventional with thin material is usually not the greatest. However, if you like to siphon feed material out of a cup underneath the gun, you don't want to use pressure or gravity, Conventional spray caps are the only thing that use, you can use to actually siphon material well. So if that's your preferred wet method of spraying, you do need a conventional cap, even with light material. Uh, and that's kind of the original spray technology. But if that's your preference, that's the kind of cap you'll use. So these are the three caps. If you have any questions about any of them, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.